The next project for the channel is going to be this right here, which is an 1840s Martin or a Martin Cooper guitar as it was known back then. Um, I sent away to Martin for these full size prints and uh, they do not have 100% of the detail on it, so some of the stuff is going to have to be worked out as we go along. But uh, it's going to be made by hand. And that is to say, using as little machinery as possible. Obviously, I will use a bandsaw and things like that just to speed up the process. But other than that, we're going to do 90% of the work by hand. Uh, and that's not to say they did not have machinery in the old days when they were built. Believe me, they had plenty of machinery. That's how they were able to produce the numbers of guitars they had and that uh, with the exact similarity. So there's a few jigs and things that are going to be made along with this guitar because they are no longer in existence, or at least not accessible to myself. So having said that, the first thing you need to do is your wood selection. The originals were made out of rosewood and Spanish cedar necks. Uh, Spanish cedar is neither from Spain nor is it cedar. It is actually a hardwood very similar or akin to mahogany, which after 1843, uh, Martin went to mahogany next. Okay, this is uh, South American cocobola wood. It is book matched. And what you'll notice though is that it's rough sawn. Uh, there is no clean square joint for us to butt up to, so the first thing that we're going to need to do is plane this completely flat, make a butt joint for it, and glue it here. So you're going to lay them face to face, one on top of the other, square as you can. And then set some kind of a temporary clamp on the end that you're going to be sanding. Also here, I like to set one here so it doesn't move. And the opposite side as well. Got it secured where it's not going to move at all. You're going to drill a couple of pilot holes up on the corners where there is going to be no body so that you don't have the hole inside the body. In other words, the guitar is going to come around this way. You know there's not going to be anything here or here. So that's where you're going to put your holes. Helps if you have a nice piece underneath this little starter. Be careful, go ahead and drill your hole. And you're going to put in a screw. It's not a contest to see how fast you can screw it in there. But you want to make sure that it goes all the way through before you do the other hole so it does not move and the holes don't line up later on. So you've got your screws in, leaving the heads above the surface of the wood so you do not split them open. You turn her sideways like this. I've got these two pieces here, which I took off of my picture frame clamp, which we're going to clamp on the top here. One on each side. That you can take your clamp, snug this up so you can get your other one on here.
just want to be about leaving about an eighth of an inch on the top there. Just like that. Now you've got a little bit of wood sitting above the seam and the aluminum. Now obviously the wood is softer than the aluminum so what you're going to do is just simply go ahead and sand this down until it's flush. That will give you a square area to make a butt joint. To join. <laughs> Once you make sure that you are completely flush all the way across the top of your surface, you're ready to unclamp this and glue it. Okay, I've got my Orville sander here set up with some fresh 220. I've got plenty of backup discs for when that one gets loaded up. Uh, we're going to start on the inside part, which will be the part inside the guitar, and we will do the uh, external back last. We'll use this as a test area. Remember, we're just going to lightly take off enough to get rid of that glue and flatten up that seam. Uh, Sand with something hard underneath it. Use a hard surface. Don't use a towel or something soft because that wood will sink into it. Okay. Uh, number two, anything you don't want dusty, cover it up. It's just common sense. And lastly, and most importantly, is this right here. Always wear a respirator when you're sanding, especially hardwoods. Some hardwoods, like mahogany, have a high percentage of carcinogens in them. I'm not sure about Coca-Cola, but it's along the same family. I'm assuming it has the same thing. So always wear a respirator. There's a big health risk with sanding this stuff. It may not bother you now. Oh, it's just a little sawdust. But down the road, it's going to cause you health problems. So please, use some common sense and some caution and wear a respirator. Uh, also, when you sand, don't go back and forth continually or side to side continually. Do not repeat that pattern. It is a way to start or go around it, but change up that pattern. Do circles back and forth, diagonal squares. It will help maintain the flatness. Okay, as you can see, the top has now been done exactly the same way as the bottom and all that's left there is to do the preliminary sand and here is the bottom after the preliminary sand. You'll notice you cannot see that joint and that was all done without a planer or a joiner. So there's a lot that you can do by hand if you just take your time. 
All right, let's talk about the wood selection. Obviously, I stated earlier I use Coca-Cola wood. I use Coca-Cola because it is the closest thing you can get to Brazilian rosewood in this country. Uh, I feel that Brazilian rosewood is the perfect acoustic guitar building material. Unfortunately, they cut so many of those trees down that you cannot buy it in this country anymore legally. All right, moving on from there. Uh, how thick do we want to keep this wood? Uh, the bottom I like to keep between 150 and 160 thousandths. The sides, of which this is a piece, and this is going to end up being the veneer for the top so it matches the bottom and the sides. Um, I like to keep those between 70 and 80 thousandths. Um, some people have them thicker. I prefer that thickness just because the wood bends easier there and with a, with a hardwood. Like that, there's a bigger chance of it splintering or cracking uh, if you if you make it too thick. Uh, the top, most crucial thickness on the instrument. Uh, this is Adirondack cedar spruce. It's been aged seven years. It's grade quadruple A, which is the highest grade you can purchase, and that means that all of the grain is exceptionally straight or true. Uh, there are no flaws. Uh, no waves, no knots, no starts, nothing in there. They're book matched. And those will make a very, very nice top. I, I chose uh, the cedar versus the spruce for the simple reason that this is a little bit darker. And uh, elder or a Sitka and our German spruce are all very, very good and very equivalent to this as far as sound. Um, we want to keep this top between 100 and 107 thousandths in thickness. Uh, I arrived at that number due to the large number of vintage guitars that I have worked on, uh, studied uh, all of them, including the Martins, the Supertones, uh, the Regals, uh, the Walshner and Son, um, Washburns, uh, really old guitars between the uh, 1860s and through the early 1920s. They are all like that thickness between 100 and 107 thousandths. And I feel that the earlier guitars were also at that thickness, possibly a little bit thicker, but not by much. So we are going to use that thickness here to achieve the same tone as those guitars. Now, next thing you're going to see on this particular build is we're going to put in the sound hole and the rosettes as well as make a bridge and uh, work on the neck. Uh, the bridge is going to be made out of a full bone material uh, because the original was ivory, which you obviously cannot purchase anymore. I'm going to use that material. It supposedly has a very similar sound property to it and also definitely will have the look. Uh, until we move on to that, I'd like to thank you for watching this part of the Martin Koopa recreation. And if you like what I do here, hit that subscribe button down there and I will shoot you out as much video as I can to help you along with your build or your restoration of an old instrument. Thanks again.